Hi, my name is Derek Fahey. I'm a registered patent attorney and trademark attorney with the Plus IP firm. And this is gonna be a short video on how to read a patent, parts of a patent, and things you should think about when you're looking at patents related to what you're doing or the patent that you may want to actually get. So let's get started. So first off, the USPTO. The USPTO, the term is actually an acronym for the United States Patent and Trademark Office. So if you hear me refer to that, that's what I'm talking about. So I actually have some patents here. Um, this is the first one I'd like to talk about, okay? So you'll see this document. Sometimes it's a long legal document. And the first thing that I look at as a patent attorney is to make sure that it's actually a patent. And you, you can see here on the top, Okay, on the top, there's a number. This number is 10480776. It says patent number, okay? It says, specifically says patent number. That's actually the number, that's patent number 10,480,776. The first thing you look at, I make sure it's actually a patent because many times people come to me and say, hey, uh, I think I'm infringing on somebody else's patent and it actually is not a patent. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, here's another example. Here is a patent application publication. So you can see here that that number is very different. It begins in the year 2019, okay? So this is a patent application publication for transactions across blockchain networks, okay? So that actually is a patent application publication. So what is a patent application publication? Well, 18 months after a ap patent application is filed with the government in the United States, the United States Patent Framework Office or the USPTO, it's examined uh, and, excuse me, it's published, excuse me. 18 months after the first filing, it's published. And when it's published, it becomes a patent application publication like you see here, again, the year right there. And that does not mean that it's a patent. A publication may actually get rejected and eventually go abandoned. So just because it's published does not mean that it's a does not mean that it's actually an issued patent. So it's something to think about if you're being if you're concerned. Now, um, the, another thing you should think about when you're looking at the patent number is the type of patent it is. This again, this patent here is a begins in a patent number. Excuse me, this patent number begins in 10480776, begins in a numeral or a number, a digit, and that's a utility patent. Utility patents begin with numbers. Unlike design patents, design patents begin with D. If you look at this here, D898110, this is a design patent. By the way, both these patents both the design patent, utility patent, or patents that I acquired for my clients, but the, the design patent begins with D, so you can easily see that it's a design patent, and right here, with that number D, with that letter D, okay? So that's something to think about. Design patents protect the ornamental features, uh, the aesthetic features of the design. So design patents, what's critical are the actual drawings, okay? The drawings are very critical for a design patent. Design patents in the US, they last for 15 years. The term of the patent uh, is 15 years from the date of the patent, which you can see right here. The date of the patent is right here. All right, date of patent. So that means that this person, this company can actually prevent others from making, using, selling, or importing their design for up to 15 years from the date of the patent. Okay, so again, going back to the patent, this is patent number 10480776. And in patent law, when we talk about patents, we typically talk about the last three numbers. So because this number begins in seven, seven, or ends in 776, I'll call this a 776 patent. Now the 776 patent, utility patents protect the functional features of an invention, unlike design patents. So for the utility patent, it protects the functional features of this, of this particular device. Utility patents have a term for 20 years. I mean, it lasts for 20 years from the date of the filing date. It's a bit different. Um, you can see the filing date actually here. You can see where it's filed. Okay, filed over here. Now you have to be careful. Uh, sometimes the utility patents actually claim the benefit of an earlier filed application. For example, I can actually show you in this particular patent, it does claim the benefit. So the next thing you would look at is what's the earlier filing date? And that typically, that typically you'll see on the next few pages, you'll see a cross-reference section called 
cross-reference to related applications. Okay, the cross-reference to related applications tells you there's another application, and this says, this application claims the benefit of the filing date of the US provisional patent application, serial number 6272640, titled Flashlight Assembly for Underuse Water, for, for use underwater, filed September 4th, 2018. So even though this patent has a filing date of September 28th, 2018, it actually claims the filing date of an earlier filed application filed earlier that year. So that's something to think about as well. And why do I mention that? Why is the filing is so important? Because the entire world operates under a first to file system, which means that the earlier you file, the better, okay? Now, what else, What other parts of a patent application should you be aware of, okay? We can look at the abstract. The abstract, okay, the abstract is right here. Now, that's not what actually is, is covered. That just gives you a brief understanding of what it is. And most patent attorneys will take the first claim, which I'll explain later, the first claim or claim number one or a related claim and condense it into the abstract. It has to be 150 words or less and it can't have lawyer-like language like comprises. So the abstract is not actually the invention, but it gives you a good understanding of what they're trying to, the patent covers or what they're trying to cover. So other parts of the patent application or the patent I'm gonna go through, we talked about the patent name, excuse me, the, um, the patent number. You can see below US patent, the name of the first inventor. It also talks about, we talked about the abstract. And then you'll typically go through some figures. The figures actually are very important. They're absolutely needed for almost every single type of patent. And I'm gonna skip through to the first page of the, the words of the document. Now, the most important part of a patent is actually the claim section. And funny enough, the claim section in the US is actually at the end of the application. So when I actually, after I, I look at a patent and I see the filing date and I see if it's applicable to my client, I actually will go right to the actual claim section to see what actually is covered. So the claim section is towards the end of the application. And I'm gonna show you an example of claims here, right here. Here is the claim section. How do you know when it starts? Because it says, I claim, I claim, it's always towards the end of the application. So it's very important. That is actually the critical part of a patent. So whenever as a patent attorney, I'm trying to determine whether or not my client's infringing on somebody else's rights, I look at the filing date, I see when it was filed, if it's still pending, because if it's not pending, it's not gonna affect my ability the ability of my client to sell a device because they cannot infringe an expired patent. And then I, if it is still pending, or if it's still, um, if it's still within the patent term, I actually go right to the claims. And I look at the claims and I read the claims to see what actually is being covered because your device actually may not be infringing on the patent claims, even though the abstract makes you think it does. So you have to be careful with that. And then something else I wanna to mention to you is even if a patent's expired, because it's expired, that does not mean it can't affect you. An expired patent is still considered prior art when you are trying to obtain a patent. So if you're trying to get a patent uh, and you wanna file a patent application and you see a patent that's expired and it's very close to your invention, it probably means you cannot get a patent on your invention because that patent, even though it's expired, is still considered prior art or would affect your ability to get a patent. So that's some stuff to think about. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, my name is Derek Fahey. You can find me on Instagram, Derek Fahey, PA, or you can uh, give us a call. You can find us on our website, www.plusfirm.com. We're happy to help answer any questions you have. So what questions do you have? Thanks so much for listening.